In this video, we'll have a look at the many ways in which you can use shadow effects in Thrive Architect, and we'll take a look at how you can use them for conversion-focused design. Hello, I'm Shane Malach from Thrive Themes, and in the Thrive Architect plugin for WordPress, one of the things that we've added as a great improvement is much more control and a much easier way to create and use shadow effects. So let's have a look at the features and then also talk about how you should and can use these features in a useful way in terms of creating high converting pages. To start, let's look at this page and let's just get this content box right here. I'm going to select this content box and the first thing we can do is we can go to the shadow options and we can add an outside shadow. And right here you can see we have a couple of controls and all of this updates live. So we can change the angle of this shadow. We can change the distance of the shadow to the object. We can change the amount of blur. And we can change the spread, which is kind of a zoom effect on the shadow. And then finally, an important control is also the color picker, although what you'll mostly be using is the opacity effect. And this brings us actually to the first principle of how to use shadows, which is that in almost all cases, it is a good idea to use black with transparency rather than a colored shadow. Let me show you what I mean. I'll move on to the next content box here for a moment, which is inside a green background. Now on here, if we apply a shadow, I'll make it a bit larger here so that you can see it more clearly. If we apply a shadow here, we could easily think that, you know, I'll, I'll make it dark green, something like this. This gives me kind of a subtle drop shadow effect. This is, this is what I want, right? And this does look good here, but the problem is that as soon as this goes outside of the green background, it looks terrible. And in fact, a colored shadow like this will look terrible on basically any background color except the one that you originally made it on, right? So this is the reason why, and the same is true for on a white background, you don't want to be creating a shadow, which again on the white background might look good like this, right? With 100% opacity and a light gray. But here we have the exact same problem in reverse. So as soon as this shadow goes on a different background color, it looks terrible. So that is the first thing to keep in mind. In almost all cases, what you want to do is you want to have a black shadow and just change the opacity of that shadow until it looks good. Now about looking good. So if we have, let's go back here and apply an outside shadow. Just like when I was talking about gradients and I'll link to that video below if you haven't seen that yet. With gradients, usually subtlety is the way to go. And the same is true for shadows, right? If we, if we make a really dark shadow and we make it you know, make it big like this, it basically looks terrible. And generally a good shadow is one that is subtle. So it would have a lot of transparency or low opacity and maybe something like this, low distance, low blur, no spread. This will create a nice subtle shadow effect that doesn't kind of, isn't distracting on the page, right? Uh, it's not it's not something that kind of grates your eyeballs, but it still helps lift this content box slightly off the page and make it stand out a bit. So subtlety is usually the way to go with shadows. Let's look at the next type of shadow you can create, which is an inside shadow. I'm going to go to this image background where it's a bit more clearly visible. So this is the second type of shadow, and this has the same controls. It's simply on the inside of the element you've selected. So here you can create this kind of vignetting effect on a background image like this using the inside shadow. All right, next we have text shadow. Now in CSS, in the, in the style language for websites, there's a difference between a shadow or a drop shadow and a the, and the text shadow. So if I select a text and I go to the shadow options and I add a shadow, as what you can see here, what happens is that the shadow is added to the block of text rather than to the letters themselves. So this isn't, this isn't a mistake in that sense. That's simply how CSS works, but we do have text shadow as well. It is in the, when you select the text in the text options under advanced, you can add text shadows. 
So there you go. If you want to add the shadow to the letters themselves, you can do that in the text options. So how would you actually apply text shadow? A typical example of this would be to improve readability of text on top of an image. So here we have this white text on top of an image. And even though the white of the text is a lot brighter than the background, because there's like a lot of different brightnesses and different colors behind this part of the text, it becomes a bit difficult to read. It doesn't like stand out properly. So here I would apply a text shadow like this. And in fact, even just this, this default shadow applied makes the text lift slightly and just makes it stand out, gives it a bit more contrast and a bit more readability against that image. The second way you can do this is by making, by giving it a lot of blur and making it darker, which kind of sets the text almost like in a, in a bed of a slight shadow. And again, just creates a subtle increased contrast to make it more readable against the background image. Now, by the way, you may have noticed that you can add more than one shadow on any element. And that's true for box shadows as well as text shadows. So you can actually add an unlimited amount of shadows and point them in different directions and give them different colors and so on. Although, as you can see here, probably you shouldn't in most cases. We'll get back to that later and why you can add multiple shadows to begin with. But first, let's move on in our tutorial and let's start talking about the purpose of shadows in terms of conversion web design. One of the best things that shadows can do for you is they can highlight things. They can basically draw attention and direct people's eyes to certain things. So if you saw the call to action tutorial I did a while ago on the link to that below, if you haven't, I used a shadow there to make that call to action more visible and just make it stand out from the page. Another example of this would be what we call affordances. Here we have a simple deliberately bland layout with a button and the button really doesn't stand out at all. And if we simply add a shadow, so if we go here to the button and we give this a simple drop shadow, something like this, I'd probably, you know, make it even more subtle than this like that. Now this button immediately stands out, even though everything is still very bland, we're not even using colors. But this shadow gives the button an affordance, which is a word for in usability. It gives you, it implies that you can do something with this. It implies that you can click it. And that makes it stand out and that makes it more clear that it's a button. Of course, if you also combine that with contrasting colors and sizes and so on, that helps. But that is one of the most important things that shadows want to do. So you want to think about visual hierarchy, what's important, what do you want to draw someone's attention to. And you should use shadows to highlight those things. And in a sense, you literally lift something above the rest of the content on the page and that draws attention. So you should be deliberate and careful about what you apply this to. And you shouldn't apply a shadow to something that isn't important or that you don't want to draw attention to. Another way in which shadows are often used is if we go to this second button here and we make this more of a typical button. Let's give it a color. Let's make the text on it white like this and let's give it a bit of a rounded effect as well. A typical way in which shadow will be used would be to add a button effect and in this case I'm going to go to 70 that is straight down and I'm going to remove blur and maybe make three the distance three and in this case I would use a colored shadow because it's not actually, I don't actually want the effect of a shadow. I want the effect of like a, a button that stands out from the page. I want to give it a bit of a 3D effect. So in this case, I would make it a dark green, maybe like this. So here, this would be a very typical button effect. And one of the ways to do that is by applying a shadow. The other way to do that is to apply a bottom border, which creates a very similar effect. But a bottom border isn't available if there is already a border around the button because you can only have one border, whereas you can have as many shadows as you want. Finally, whenever you want any kind of border or outline or anything like that around an object or an image, sometimes using shadows is an easier way to do it. So as an example, just as a visual effect on this image, in this case, we could do this by stacking multiple boxes on top of each other and positioning them relative or absolute or something, you know, nudging them around until they have this arrangement and rounding them and making them all the same size. It's pretty complicated to get this effect using three boxes behind the image. But really what we have here is we just have the image and we have three drop shadows 
and each of the drop shadows has a color, is solid, each of them points in the same direction, and they have just increasing distances from each other. So certain effects are much easier to accomplish using shadows, even if they don't look like shadows at first. All right, so that was my crash course on how to use the shadows features in Thrive Architect. I hope you find this useful. And if you have any other questions or any thoughts to share about this, please let me know by leaving a comment.